I'm Mark Hamm uh, from Indiana State University, uh, and we are working on an NIJ project on uh, lone wolf terrorism in America, uh, looking at uh, prevention strategies through an understanding of the radicalization process by law enforcement. Lone wolf terrorism is someone who acts alone uh, with, uh, uh, without the help or uh, encouragement of a government or uh, an, a terrorist organization uh, uh, who acts without the direction or leadership of a, a hierarchy, um, someone who designs the plan and the methods by themselves without any sort of outside support, uh, and who is, uh, acts totally alone uh, without the support of any second individual or third individual. It has to be political crime, you know, it has, to, I mean that, by definition, that's what terrorism is, right? It has to have a political motive. Uh, I mean, that's consistent with the government's definition in most academic definitions, is it has to have a political grounding. Therefore, a mass shooting, uh, you know, at Aurora or uh, what happened in, in Connecticut, as far as we know so far, there was no political basis for that, it was simply an, an act of mass, uh, of mass shooting, and, and Columbine in Virginia Tech, for example, um, these were primarily uh, initiated out of, um, of revenge, uh, or, and, and so, or grief, you know, sometimes these are uh, the motives. Uh, we also exclude, because of that definition, we also exclude uh, acts of political violence, that uh, acts of violence that were uh, committed for pursuit of financial profit or fame. I mean, the, the uh, famous case is uh, uh, John Hinckley and the shooting of President Reagan, right? It was done primarily uh, for Hinckley to, to gain some sort of notoriety. Um, so there was, uh, the, the basis was less political than it was individual uh, in, in, in a search for indeed celebrity of some sort. We look at, at lone wolf terrorism from 1940 until uh, 2012, and actually we've got two more cases in 2013, and this is just for two months into it. Um, and we see a spike in incidences of lone wolf terrorism uh, beginning in around 2009. And uh, 2009, 2010, we had some very uh, important cases, uh, the Fort Hood shooting, uh, the talk on the Holocaust Museum, uh, those happened in 2009. The, the case of the uh, shooting down at the Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas Army Recruiting Center, the attack on Representative Giffords. Um, so w a number of these high profile cases have occurred since 2009. Um, some of these have been thwarted plots. Uh, some of these have been uh, executed uh, attacks. Um, so as we do the math on this, um, since 2009, we see on average uh, one of these uh, attacks or interrupted plots once every f about 45 days. What we find is that many of them indeed broadcast their intent to commit violence. Uh, Theodore Kaczynski, the Unabomber, famously published a manifesto in the New York Times and in the Washington Post saying what he was going to do, right? People will have to die, said Kaczynski, right? So he, he not only took, took responsibility, he forewarned people that he was going to do this. Uh, Gerald Loeffner, the young disturbed man who shot Gabby Giffords, you know, posted YouTube videos uh, before that incident in which he uh, railed against the government, which he burned flags, and in one he even provides his own definition of terrorism. And, this ha and he then exchanged letters with the congresswoman. So she knew who he was. The letters went back and forth. His high school, co his, his college classmates knew that he uh, had, had very deep-seated anger uh, about the congresswoman. And so he, 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 this was not in isolation. He was broadcasting his intent to commit violence. Now, I've mentioned two of 80 cases, right? And so it's, I can't go through every one of them, but all I can say is, is that so far, as we look at these, 
we've seen a pattern in which these uh, people uh, almost cry out uh, to others uh, that they're going to commit this act of violence. This will be the largest database on lone wolf terrorism that's ever been uh, created. Um, it's, 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 again, we're in some 80 to 90 cases across 16 variables, and that's some uh, 1,300 data points on lone wolf terrorism. And it also includes um, military experience, and it, it includes the locus of radicalization. In other words, where were they radicalized? So we're finding that some were radicalized in the military, some were radicalized uh, in the workplace, uh, some were radicalized over the internet, right? So uh, if, uh, understanding place of radicalization we think is important too because then this uh, sends some, uh, some message to those organizations that, you know, this does happen within, uh, you know, th these particular uh, social institutions. We would like to give police and policymakers a document that could identify some potential signatures of an attack by someone who, is, uh, who may be a lone wolf terrorist. Signatures, broadcasting of terrorist intent being one of the major ones. Um, affiliate or, or uh, some sort of, of an affinity with uh, an extremist group, but not membership in the group but demonstrate some affinity. The presence of perhaps an enabler, right? Someone who comes from the outside, is not part of it, any sort of conspiracy or plot, but through their rhetoric, they inspire, they enable this person to do that. Um, so if you put these things, and there are others, there's 16 total variables that try to predict these uh, cases, and the more that uh, we can understand those and articulate what they, they are, they may indeed pr provide a bunch of, a set of, of uh, signatures for investigators working to the left of Bang.